be seated in the presence of the Lord. We'll give God the praise and the glory. Amen. I surrender all. Amen. Makes sense, church. We have to surrender because the King of Kings is above all, and that's Amen. the reality of it. Amen. And in surrendering, God's people need to know that we cannot carry on by ourselves. The day we try to do that, yes. we're going to be in a lot of problems. So let us go to God about this. Father, we give you praise. And we give you glory, God Almighty. We thank you this day for your love for us. We thank you, Father, that you're willing to be your burden bearers, oh God. There's nothing, God, that you cannot do for us. And we thank you that your Father, that you continue, Lord God, to invite your children, oh, hallelujah, to surrender to you, Father, because you're God Almighty, the Sovereign One, and all people, Lord, one day shall surrender. Whether they do it now, they bow now, or they do it then, God, one day you will reign forever victoriously and your people will come to know that you are almighty God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us this far in this worship. And we thank you, Father, that you have received our worship that came up to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for life. We thank you for strength. And we thank you, God, for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who makes it all possible for us to continue to surrender to you, mighty God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, then, that as your word go forth, that God, you will humble me even now. Use my mouth as a mouthpiece. And let your word go, God, with victory and power. And the people who will hear and receive, God, that you will change their hearts. That you will give them a new understanding. And the requirement, Lord, that you require from all of us as children of yours. We bless your holy name, O oh God, and give you all the praise. And we give you all the glory and we pray, Father, that even now, God, that any lingering spirits that are hanging around in your sanctuary, that your Holy Spirit, Father, will arrest them now and take them out of this place that your word, Shanda, uh, can go forth uh, and your people's ears, God, will be attentive. Their hearts, God, will be aligned unto you and you alone. We bless your holy name and we praise and we give you all the glory. Hallelujah, in no other name but in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. And God's children will all agree and say amen and amen and amen. I'm very excited this morning to bring the word of God to you. And it's entitled, Only in Childlike Submission. I will say it again. Only in Childlike Submission you will be able to enter God's kingdom. Only in childlike submission, you will be able to enter into God's kingdom. And I'm going to use Luke 18 from 15 to 17, that Jesus Christ had a conversation with his disciples. And the word of God says, then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, as a little child will by no means enter it. And that's what the word of God says, coming from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. When the Bible speaks of the kingdom of God, what does it really mean? God's kingdom is the ultimate divine rule of an eternal sovereign God over all the heaven and the earth. 
knowing about the kingdom of God and what we need to do to gain entry is absolutely critical. For the reason that reason Jesus Christ placed great emphasis in revealing the truth about his father's kingdom in approximately seven parables confirmed in the book of Matthew 13 from verses 1 to 50. And you can read that when you go home, make a note of it. The central truth being taught by Jesus Christ through these seven parables is the immense value of the kingdom of God. Gaining entry ultimately outweighs any sacrifice or inconvenience one might encounter here on earth. Undoubtedly, these teachings caught the attention of a certain Jewish man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a teacher. He was a teacher of the law. And he was a Pharisee from the Sanhedrin Council, the governing body of the Jews. And Jesus Christ met Nicodemus by the way. The word of God says that the Jewish council which he was allowed by the Roman authority in the time of Jesus Christ allowed a measure of self-rule and the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem was the final court of appeals for matters regarding Jewish law and religion. So we read this morning in the book of John chapter 3 where this man Nicodemus came in contact with the teaching of God's word. And in those days, the Pharisees thought that they were the ultimate rule. They taught the word and the law according to their understanding. But when Jesus came on the road and came in, in existence and came to them and started to teach with authority, they knew that there was something different with this man. So Nicodemus the word of God said, went to Jesus by night to inquire of him. He wanted to know, where you, where, what, what are you about? Are you this Messiah or who you are really? The word of God says that, the, the, that, that Nicodemus, when he went to Jesus, he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And it, the word when he spoke to Jesus, it sounded as if he wanted to beat Jesus up. He wanted, you know, to say, who, wait, you, you are true, are you of God, really? What Jesus Christ knew from the beginning and just took over the conversation Jesus didn't allow Nicodemus to control the narrative. Jesus indeed said to him that you, unless you are born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again. And Nicodemus didn't ask Jesus about any kingdom. That was the question. He just went and he made a statement. That he was truly had to be, Rabbi, are you truly from God? Because the things that you do, the person has to be from God. But I give God the praise and the glory that God, Jesus Christ, didn't allow Nicodemus to control the narrative. You see, that's the thing with God's people. Sometimes we think that we know everything. We think that, you know, whatever we say, we know how to worship God and all of that. And we most of the time want to control how we think that we should serve God. Or what should really take us into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, church, is a serious place. It is. And we, if we listen to the world today, everybody who dies, they're up there. If the cat dies, she's up there. If the dog dies, he's up there. 
I've heard so much folly about God's kingdom. I heard one lady once she lost her husband and when the husband died, she said, well, I hope he's not up there fooling around. And I'm like, wait a minute now. What do real people really take the kingdom of God for? And that's the thing with the, 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 the people in the world today. They want to, to control how God's kingdom is by their own understanding. But God's kingdom is a holy place. That's where God lives, he resides, his angelic host. That everything that is pure and holy pertains and, 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 and is enlightened to that place. And if children of God think that they will enter into that place, Jesus Christ settled it. We have to become like little children. That's what he told Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was kind of not understanding what Jesus was saying. To be born again, what does that mean? I'm an old man, how can I enter into my mother's womb the second time? But Jesus says, no, it, I'm not talking about natural things now. I'm talking about spiritual things that you have to be born again. You have to be born of the water and of the spirit. And water is cleansing. We have to be cleansed, church. We cannot imagine ourselves the same old person and thinking that when Jesus came and died to make it different for us, that we are going to be going into the presence of God with our old ways, our own motives, or our actions. It doesn't work like that. The kingdom of God has standards and we have to meet God's standards because he made the provision to Jesus Christ for us. It's not difficult, but it's just that people want to be their own self and their own ways and they continue to live as how they want to live and express that, that one day when they pass on, that the presence of God will be around them, that they're going to enter into the presence of God. It doesn't work like that. I'm here to tell you that we have to submit ourselves like little children. Little children. Nicodemus realized that all the things that he knew and what he thought about the law, he knew that he had to abandon all of that. That he had to wipe his slate clean and he was willing to do it. Because the man went to Jesus seeking. He went to Jesus by night, perhaps was afraid of his counterparts. But the thing what I know is that when you're looking for to run for your life or to look for your salvation, you got to work it out your way in terms of whatever it takes to get to Jesus. Let no one stop you. Let nobody hinder you. Let no philosophy change what you think. Amen. God's philosophy and the word of God must guide us and help us to get to that place. Yes. We have to realize that Jesus Christ laid the foundation and he made it possible through his blood that he yes. shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. It's the world who complicates it and don't want to believe that, you know, they have to submit. People high and lofty and all the things that they want to do. The kingdom of God requires true transformation, complete renewal and regeneration through the Holy Spirit and Almighty God are absolutely a must. The position, the poison of sin is too great to overcome by any quick fix human antidote. We have to surrender and be born again. And that is absolutely how it is. So we got to understand that the standards of God, that we have to meet those standards Amen. to Jesus Christ. Amen. And we give God thanks that it's nothing of our own that we have to do, you know, because the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us to make it possible. To make it possible, we have to identify and to realize and come to the understanding that we are all sinners and that we all need 
salvation. We all need to be cleansed. We all need to be changed. And according to Matthew Henry, I was looking at this man's word that he, he says about going into, entering into the kingdom of God and the need for us to transform. The man says corruption and sin are woven into our nature. And we are shaped in iniquity and in sin we were conceived, which makes it necessary that the sin nature must be changed. Uh -huh. It is not enough to put a new coat or a new face and pretend that we are heading for the kingdom of God. Huh. On the contrary, we must be born again and be transformed as a new person. Yes, we must become new creatures, for the sinful flesh will give birth only to fleshly outcomes. Meanwhile, the spirit will give birth to the outcomes that are spiritual. And this is why in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the word of God confirms that therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed, and behold, all things have become new. Ezekiel, the prophet of God, captures it in Ezekiel 36, 25 to 27. When Ezekiel said, God will sprinkle clear water on you and mentor into Israel and all of God's people, and you shall be clean. And I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. So God is promising to the prophet Ezekiel six centuries before Jesus Christ came on the earth that a time is coming when there will be a transformative new beginning characterized by spectacular cleansing, symbolized by water that washes away all impurities and idols, and by the powerful gift of his Holy Spirit that will transform the hearts of people. That is what is required if we propose to enter into the kingdom of God. We also understand and read through the word in Matthew 19 from 16 to 22 where Jesus Christ had an encounter with a rich young ruler and the man came this young man came to Jesus and he said good teacher again begin up to think begin up Jesus what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life so he said to him, that's Jesus, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall live and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, Lord, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But then the young man heard, when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful and he had grave for he had great possession things of the world that people cannot surrender to god it can be behaviors it can be an ideology it can be so many things church that people continue to hang on to and jesus is saying to us that we have to let, submit them let them loose get rid of them if you want me if you want to follow me you have to put away all those situations and come follow me. Those who defy God's authority and refuse to humble and submit to him should not expect to be a part of God's kingdom. I'm saying it because that is so. 
in contrast, those who acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ and gladly surrender to God's rule are kingdom citizens. Jesus Christ consistently declared that his kingdom was not of this world and he preached repentance and the need for one to be born again to be absolutely necessary if one desires to enter into God's kingdom. And that is so. We can't change that. That's the rule of law for God's kingdom. That's the only rule of law. We have to surrender. We have to submit. We have to be born again. New creatures. New, we, we, we cannot expect that, you know, the sinful man, the nature that we have, that we can continue to keep those and hang on to those nature and expect that one day we are going to be in God's kingdom doesn't work like that. We give God the praise and the glory because we read this morning also about a man who was transformed, who was born again because he came in contact with Jesus Christ. And that man is Saul, also a Pharisee. Religious man. Gamaliel, who brought him up and trained him. And you see, that's the problem with church folks today. Too much religious. Mm. Too much or too many religious training and teachings that folks sometimes Jesus Christ is calling them. Beckoning, change, please change, submit and surrender. But because of the philosophies, because of the teachings, because they are so connected with the religion, they cannot give way to it. They can't bypass it. They can't get away from it. Saul was one man who thought that he had all the information. He thought that one day he was going to be with God because he thought that he was carrying out God's work until, until Jesus Christ told him and met him on the Damascus Road. The man was committed to trample the church of Jesus Christ that he had died for because of religion, because of the teaching that he got. But the word of God confirmed in Acts 9 from 1 to 9 that as he was on his way to Damascus, on the way he was going to arrest God's people, Jesus Christ made the arrest himself. He took Paul, Saul, and struck him down on his face and he had no control. And when God's people read the word of God, we should understand the powerful mighty God. Yes. To know that he's in control. Yes. To know that he has the power to do all things. To know that whether or not we want to surrender, God can get us to surrender. Amen. He has all power and he has all control. And the word of God says that when Saul was hit down on his face, he realized and know that this must be a force above all the forces of religion. He realized that he was dealing now and came in contact with the man Christ Jesus. Because he said, Lord, who are you? Who are you, Lord? And Jesus Christ said, yes, I am he whom you have been persecuting. You cannot kick against the pricks. And when the conversation was done, Saul was renewed. He was a new man. He was born again. He was changed. His old ways were taken from him. But the man was submitted. And that's the thing. He surrendered his life so that Jesus Christ can do the work in him. Can change him. And the word of God says Saul was left blind. Blind to help him to understand that despite the fact that you are seen in the natural, you're truly blind in the spiritual. And this is why a lot of folks don't know today, children of God, 
They will go their ways and they think they have it all down pat. I know who I'm worshipping and I worship how I need to worship and all this and that. But God has one standard and he's not going to compromise his standard. He will not change his standard church to please anyone. His standard is high and exalted. His standard is pure and holy. And every child of God who determined to make heaven their home, if we want to be in the presence of God, then we have to learn from now. We can't wait until when we go up there and we learn. I mean, we have to start the training from here because this is what it's all about. To be trained while we are on earth, we have our pastors, our teachers, ministers that are ministering to us and it's for us to do that change, to humble ourselves so the Spirit of God can do all the change. Yes, Saul was changed and he was changed to Paul. And that's the thing. When you are changed from your old ways, you cannot be the same person. Paul got a new identity because he was willing to clean his slate. See, that's what the Spirit of God showed me. A lot of folks would have gotten changed. They would be able, the Spirit of God would have been able to change them. But they're not willing to clean the slate. They don't want to clean off the slate and wipe it clean and start all over as so God says that they're to start. They still want to bring forward some of the teachings that they get. Saul, no, it wasn't that for him. He cleaned his slate clean as a whistle and started under the auspices of the Holy Spirit of God. Because we now be able to change him, to clean him up, and to put him on the pathway to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is why James 4 from 5 to 10 confirms. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the light sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. So the word of God continues to confirm that Saul was totally surrendered to God. And God had provided the whole process of change for him. And when he was totally changed, God used him to go forward to preach his gospel. We give God the praise and the glory for humility. Without humility, none of us will make it. We have to be able to humble ourselves as children of God, knowing that God is highly exalted. And we can, once we try to raise our heads up or to say that we are better than this and we can be taught and we can be this we are saying indeed that you know we we know who we are and we can do as we please it doesn't work like that we have to surrender ourselves be childlike so that we can enter into god's kingdom it is not an easy process when you are grown and with all your habits and what you think you know before, to now become like a little child, to be taught. A little child is just don't know anything. You have to do everything for them. Think for them, provide for them, direct them, take them wherever they need to be. And that is what Jesus Christ is asking of us grown folks who sometimes are set in our ways and not easily willing to you know, surrender. But with the Spirit of God's help, yes. we can surrender if we surrender. Paul Amen. was totally surrendered. And this is why he was able to do the work of Almighty God. Amen. Without humility, we cannot please God. We can't. 
Why? Because Jesus Christ humbled himself. When you think of it, church, as the Spirit of God was showing me, is that God Almighty, through Jesus Christ, humbled himself in such a way that he decided to born, be born. He had to be born a child, a little baby, in a woman's womb. And he set the example and the pace to know that any child of his to come and to make it into the kingdom of God, we have to be born again. Yeah. Whatever the sinful ways that we have, yeah. we have to submit them to the almighty God Amen. and God will do all that change. If Jesus decide to be born, we are no different. Amen. It shows us that absolutely that we have to be born of the spirit and of the blood and the water. We cannot expect to continue or you know or put in all wine, put in new wine into old wives. It doesn't work. Or we want to sew old clothes on new garment. It doesn't work like that. There must be a change. We have to submit ourselves so that we can be changed totally and God will lead us into his eternal kingdom when he comes for us one day. We don't know when, but it is sure. So it is for us to prepare ourselves and submit ourselves to God's Holy Spirit and our, this Holy Spirit of God will guide us and to keep us and to change us. So Paul knew about what it was to be humbled. And he told the Philippians church that in Philippians 2 from 5 to 13, the word of God says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God did not, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is Christ the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen. So we all have to work Amen. out our own thing. Amen. We can't expect anyone to humble for us. We have to do the work. We have to humble ourselves yes. and submit ourselves so that God's Holy Spirit can do his work in us. Yes. Paul realized that God had no place in his kingdom for anyone that is grown up, puffed up, self-righteous, stiff naked, self-sufficient people. Folks who behave as if they are unteachable disobedient and behaving as if they know everything and cannot be corrected, will by no means enter into the kingdom of God. But on the contrary, God Almighty has a place in his kingdom for those of us who have been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ and have submitted to his full authority. Once you are born again, we will be clothed with humility and become as newborn babes who are willing to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. As a kingdom citizen and the Paul, Apostle Paul therefore submitted himself to the authority of Jesus in order to gain entry into the kingdom of God. And this is why he confirms in Philippians 3 from 4 to 11, which I'm gonna read. He says, though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I am more so circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, 
concerning the righteousness which is in the law blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. So the man was fully surrendered. He was fully surrendered, church. And if we are not totally surrendered, God cannot do the work in us. There are sometimes we have little parts, compartments of our lives that we hide away and we tuck away. When God is looking on them all because no one can hide from God. Amen. But we have to freely. God is not going to snatch anything that we don't freely surrender to him. He is almighty God. And he wants that from all his children. He is heavenly father for us. And we are the children of his fold. But if we don't behave as if we are children in a childlike manner, God cannot do anything in us. He cannot do the work that he wants to do in us. When we want to know that who, you know, we are this up here and some down this level and all that, we got to check that out. Don't work like that in the kingdom of God. God's people are all on the same level. Is they're all on the same level, church. We're all children of God. And God loves every child of his. He had, Jesus had to correct his disciples. If you go to Matthew 18 from 1 of 4, you see where he corrected them. When the word of God says at that time the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? What a question. Then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, As surely I say to you, unless you are converted or be born again and become as little children, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of God. That's what he told his disciples. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Can you imagine for some people who are so puffed up? People who have so many sometimes credentials behind the name. And if you don't address them as Dr. Bishop Pastor counselor in one stretch apostle they are upset they want to eat you up because they want the accolades not so with God's people God's people need to know that humility is required because that's why Jesus Christ did his life and lived his life like that to be born of a woman, born again of a woman. So if Jesus had to do it, coming from his glory, from one kingdom to earth's kingdom, he made the switch. So if we want to make it from this kingdom into his kingdom, we got to make that switch too. We got to realize that it's the requirement of Almighty God. And as soon as God's people can get this all worked out, uh -huh. then Jesus Christ can do the work in us. Amen. Unless we surrender ourselves, unless we become as little children, uh -huh. a little child who is so helpless, it's scary to think of what the requirement is. A little child is just laying there helpless if you don't feed the child. If you don't bathe the child, if you don't dress the child, if you don't take care of the child, that child can die. And it's the same thing, church, in the spiritual realm. If, if we don't surrender ourselves so that God can take care of us, we will die spiritually. 
And that's the whole thing, the end of it. We can die, and this is why God wants us all to surrender. Childlike submission, like a little child, helpless on our God. Because he is great. When we do that, we are showing God and exalting him in his greatness and his power to take care of us because we can't do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. And I'm going to use Micah 6 verse 8 to so kind of summarize, summarize, summarize everything. And Micah says, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. May God help us today to submit in a childlike manner so that we'll be able one day to enter in the presence of Almighty God. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. And we thank you, God, for this word, Lord, and we thank you for your strength. We thank you, Father, that you are in total control. And we bless your holy name, O oh God, and worship you this day. We thank you, God, for allowing us to come in your holy presence and for even speaking on behalf of your Lord through the bless your blessed Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that your word will go and your children will have heard. Lord God Almighty, that it will tingle in their ears and change their hearts, O oh God. We give you thanks, Lord, that your power through your Holy Spirit is able to do your work in us, Lord, that it doesn't depend on us, but if we surrender ourselves, O oh God, under the blood of Jesus Christ, under your authority, then, Father, you will be able to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, to prepare us, to change us, and to fashion us, Almighty God. We give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord God, and we surrender ourselves and our hearts, our ways, our motives, God Almighty, the things that we struggle with. We surrender them unto you, Lord God, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will give us victory over them all. Loving Heavenly Father, go with us even now and prepare the way, Lord, and have your way. Be behind us, God, to grace us, beside us to guide us, before us to lead us, and above us, O oh God, to bless and to refresh us. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you all the glory. In no other name but in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior, God's children will all agree and say, Amen and Amen, Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus.